Management Accounting 21 Contribution Margin Analysis. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. You'll see similar topics covered on our video, Management Accounting 10. Let's go back to a basic definition of contribution margin. Sales minus variable cost, and you'll see more information on that definition on cost accounting aid as I have in parentheses. And we talked about the idea that cost, that contribution margin covers two amounts. In other words, when we have money left in the bucket, when we have sales minus variable cost, the money that's left in the bucket, the contribution margin covers two things. It has to pay for my fixed costs like rent, leases, any fixed costs you might name, insurance premiums, whatever it might be. And after I pay my fixed costs, the remainder is operating income or profit. And what this really deals with is decisions with limited resources. We have to make decisions on which way to go, what decision to make to best make use of our resources. I want to bring that up in the context of filmmaking. There was a recent article from the Wall Street Journal about foreign films transforming Hollywood, foreign forces, excuse me, transform Hollywood films. And everybody remembers the comedy hit Anchorman. And it turns out that the director, Adam McKay, had gone back to his studio and said, I want to make a sequel to Anchorman because the film was so successful the first time, 90 million in sales at the box office. But only 5 million of that came from ticket sales abroad. And what the studio told him was, we don't think the movie will be profitable enough because it won't be attractive enough overseas. Well, so what? Why does that matter? Well, the facts are that now foreign films make up 68% of the $32 billion film market, which is up 10% from a decade ago. So the fast-growing market for movies and films is overseas. So as a result, American films are being retooled to suit what foreign tastes, what foreign people want. For example, the studios are cutting back on standard Hollywood fair like romantic comedies because foreign moviegoers don't get the American jokes. They don't find them all that funny because they don't translate overseas. So a comedy like Anchorman is less likely to be made. How did this change occur? Well, up until recently, a large amount of profit for making a film was from home video. It used to account for a bulk of the film's profits, and that's fell more than 20%. So there's been a shift away from home video. Most of us watch stuff on the internet. We can rent things cheaply, and we're not buying home video anymore. We've got dwindling in theater audiences in North America. We have increasing theater audiences elsewhere in the world in places like Asia and Eastern Europe. They have a long discussion here about Russia. So you can see in red the increased percentage of bo movie box office revenue is from foreign films. Let's take that example and flip over to Excel. Let's assume your Paramount picture is a large film studio. And you have a film editing staff, the people that take the raw film and edit it, cut it, paste it, put the music on it, make sure the dialogue's okay, the sound, everything. And you have a staff that handles the film editing. And the question that I have in purple here is, how does the studio best use the available capacity? Because we can't edit every film all at once. There's a limited resource, a limited staff and equipment. So let's look at an analysis. Let's say there's a domestic only comedy film that's only released in the U.S. And then there's an action film that's going to be in the U.S. and overseas. And these are dollars and millions. So here's the sales, less the variable cost. And we come up in purple with a contribution margin right here sales minus variable cost in millions. I introduce another term, the contribution margin ratio, and if I click on the cell, we see that's the contribution margin divided by sales as a percentage. So the contribution margin for the domestic film is 32%. The 
The contribution margin for the international film, 39%. Now, we've got some editing time for each film. We think it's going to take 200 hours to edit the domestic film, 250 hours to edit the action film. Maybe the action film because there's more filming and the shots are more complicated because of the fast action, it's going to take longer to edit. And the editing department tells us well, we've got 400 hours available total time over the next 30 days to edit a movie. And the question is, how do we determine the best way to use that available 400 hours? Well, one way we could look at it is to look at contribution margin per hour. And the best way to explain it is to click on the cell and say, in the first case on the domestic film, we've got 19 million. I multiplied the 19 times million. And I divided it by the editing time required for the domestic film. And I got, well, it's $95,000 an hour. Or 19 million divided by 200 to get to $95,000 an hour for the domestic film. It's $140,000 an hour if I click on the cells. 35 times a million, 35 million divided by 250. It's $140,000 per hour for the international film. So the result would be we'd edit the international film first because we make more profit from the international film using this as a comparison. Here's another measurement using contribution margin in the break-even formula. We know that oftentimes films success is driven by hiring well-known actors. We have actors making 10, 15, 20 million dollars a movie to draw in moviegoers. And the issue here is can we afford to pay for the well-known actor and be profitable? So here in millions is our basic break-even formula. Sales less variable cost equals contribution margin. The same formula that we had right up here. And then finishing the break-even analysis, we subtract fixed costs and we come up with a profit. And we can look at that dollar profit divided by sales. And again, it's all in millions. And what we find out is, is that in this scenario, I'm talking about hiring the well-known actor that's going to be in this fixed cost bucket. Well, the domestic comedy looked at in this analysis is more profitable because they have a lower fixed cost. They're not paying high paid, high paid actors to the same extent as the international film. So now we can do some manipulation because we see the domestic film is more profitable divided as a percentage of sales than the international. So maybe the international film says, okay, well, what if we only paid 24 million? Still, the domestic film is better. What about 22 million? And at 22 million, fixed costs, and again, the fixed costs are largely going to be payments to the well known actors, we can see that the profit is getting close to being the same. So, if you're the executive working in the studio and you're trying to get a handle on who you want to hire as an actor and how much you're going to pay them, and you're comparing two different types of film at two different levels of of box office and sales that you expect, you can start to figure out how much I can afford to pay a well-known actor and incur that fixed cost and still come out with the same sort of profitability on the domestic, on the international film as you have on the domestic film. And now you can start to justify paying the fee. It's just like sports teams that have to do analysis and justify paying the best athletes on their sports team. That's the end of Management Accounting 21. You'll see our one hour long essential courses that are available. Here's our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You can register for live one on one tutoring using gotomeeting.com. On our website, here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.